collaboration with the Cyprus Mail, this is the Cyprus News Digest with Rosie Haralambus. On this week's programme, we hear about the Determined for Peace initiative from a former foreign minister. To join forces in an effort to work with public opinion and promoting the necessity for peace through an agreement, a mutually agreed solution of Bizonal Bicommunal Federation. And a former interior minister. We must understand that saying no to the federation, we say yes to the partition. This must be clear. There is no other solution than the federation. The OPEC Association for Social Reform is holding an open discussion on the natural gas issue. It seems that uh, since uh, the Greek Cypriots are moving on without including in any way the Turkey Cypriots into this uh, issue, we have all these consequences around Cyprus with the drilling of uh, Turkey in our seas. So what we want to see and discuss is what we should do about it. And Italian film days continue this weekend. Our movies are in original language, Italian, and this is a part of uh, our, our job to promote the Italian language. But having subtitles in Greek and in English will allow a greater public uh, to participate. The blame game in the Cyprus problem continues. It never seems to go away. And it seems that a lot of people are getting heartily sick of it. Last week in Nicosia, there was a press conference organised by a new grouping of politicians and citizens from all walks of life in Cyprus, many of them respected and public figures for many years. The grouping calls itself Determined for Peace, and that's exactly what they say they are. They're going to work towards a bizonal, bicommunal federation as the only only pragmatic solution for the Cyprus issue. Joining us on the programme this week is one of the faces of that grouping. He is former foreign minister and also former member of the European Parliament, Ioannis Kasoulides. When I spoke to him after the conference, I asked him to outline what its aims were. The idea here, for me, the most um, uh, impressive part of the idea is that we got together politicians from DC, from AKEL and from other political parties to join forces in an effort to work with public opinion and promoting the necessity for peace through an agreement, a mutually agreed solution of Bizonal Bicommunal Federation. Now, can I suggest that your timing is because it seems fairly clear to many people that the current government is reeling back somewhat from the BBF, the Bizonal Federation. Well, and listen. it seems that the Turkish Cypriots are also working against it. First of all, I want to say that this initiative is not going to do any kind of uh, opposition to the government or to the other political parties or, for this effect, any support for the government and the other political parties. It remains above this uh, debate. This will be left to the political parties to do. What we want is to, through dialogue, through uh, lectures, through discussions, uh, through ways of reaching them through the uh, mass media and uh, the electronic media to convince the people that they should allay their fears of the unknown following a solution and work uh, and support this solution. This is essential for any leader who is negotiating to know that behind him stands a public opinion 
which is in favour of a solution. And that's what's been missing all these years because no government so far has undertaken an initiative to inform the people who will presumably vote in a referendum if there is a solution agreed about what the solution entails if it's a federation. Most Cypriots haven't a clue what a federation is. Well, I don't agree with you there. Neither do I agree with all uh, with the thousands of Cypriots who say, but I didn't know what is federation. Of course they know. They are not uh, uh, stupid. When one talks about by zonal, by communal federation, it's obvious. It will be a federation of two constituent states, so of two zones, governed by each community respectively. Yes, but there are many different types of federation across the world. This federation lie to Cyprus. But the I one that think, I have just described. Yes, but do people here actually understand the difference between what the constituent states do and the federal government does? The role of... Anyhow, I will not argue on this. What we need now is to... I, I'm not so sure that is the role of a government who is at the same time negotiating terms of a solution to go out in a public campaign uh, in favor of a solution that has not yet been reached. I think this is the work of civil society and an initiative that is, that is like ours, is going to do this. How, though, are you going to get, for example, the media, which have been not very helpful in many ways on anything to do with a solution. Well, some media you will get them, some media you will not get them. And some political parties from both sides of the divide, you will never get them, some you will. And that's interesting because you are a cross-party movement. Uh, and I absolutely. think, am I right, and is many, this the first time Many academics, Cyprus? many other, yeah. Well, this is the first time. That's what I like about it. From the ruling DC party, former foreign minister and MEP, Ioannis Kasoulidis, talking after the launch of the Determined for Peace initiative. And then from the other end of the political spectrum, I caught up with Andreas Christou of Akel, a former interior minister and former mayor of Limassol. We shall try, first of all, to mobilize people around the only uh, available, if we can say so, solution, which is the uh, bicommunal uh, federation. We must understand that saying no to the federation, we say yes to the partition. This must be clear. There is no other solution than the federation. The next option is the partition, and we don't want to divide our island. Second, we shall try to encourage people who see things as we see them to participate more, more actively in this, uh, let's say, uh, popularization of the content of the Federation. Things wrong uh, uh, approaches disinformation, a lot of uh, wrong information which is going from one media to other media gives the people the impression that... Uh, there are alternatives, uh, uh, and there aren't. Yes, there aren't. there aren't. So, and finally, to get in touch with people uh, who understand that we need to exercise our goodwill towards the leaderships, especially in those parties where the Federation is the only and final task of the solution of the Cyprus issue. It's all down, isn't it, to pragmatism, because for many years people have been sold fancy ideas. I remember talking to George Vassiliou, former president, several times, who said, we can't have a solution we want. We can only have a solution that is possible. Yes, exactly. You know, in all times, recently, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, in all nations, people used to look to the impossible very often. And few people, few leaders could 
land, if we can say so, people like Eleftherios Venizelos, who after the defeat of the Greek army in Minor Asia in 1922, said that we must not only came back from all the areas which were uh, occupied by Greek forces, but we must proceed to the exchange of population. And do you remember at that time, two million of Greeks who live in Minor Asia and one million of Turks, Ottomans, who live in Greece, were exchanged. History and economy never accepts excuses. So, what's your message to people? We must take, we must fully use the opportunity which is now in the hands of President Anastasiadis and Mr. Mustafa Kinshi. It seems that there is an agreement to the terms, text, of terms of references. This will be a success of the pragmatism and uh, let's support the events and the idea of the solution and of the peace on this island. Can it be done before there are elections in the north? Mustafa Akinci might not get re-elected. I know. No, Mikhail Sarangici will win the elections. I am sure. That's former mayor of Limassol and former interior minister Andreas Christou. Now, I should point out that I was talking to them last week after they launched their Determined for Peace initiative. And, of course, Mr Christou was talking there about the terms of reference, which everybody had hoped would be agreed so negotiations could restart. But after extending her stay to almost a week, Jane Holyut, the UN's special envoy for Cyprus, left the island. Nothing was agreed... And so things are carrying on as before. However, earlier this week, the Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu stoked tensions by warning Greek Cypriots that they should accept a joint gas committee. He insisted there would be no talks without advanced Turkish Cypriot political equality. He went on to say that President Anastasiades was very good at saying different things to different people. He also said that during the Kranz-Montana negotiations in 2017, the President had said that they should look at a two-state solution but not announce it before the 2018 presidential elections. This, of course, has been denied by President Anastasiades. The Turkish foreign minister also said that it's not possible to continue from where we left off in Kranz, Montana. It was the last negotiation we will make in this way, he said. He also added that he doesn't rule out any solution model and that they are against imposing any kind of solution. He concluded by saying, however, that the essence of the matter was for the Greek Cypriot side to accept political equality for the Turkish Cypriots with all its elements in advance. Keep up to date with events in Cyprus and around the world with the Cyprus News Digest. On Monday, the Association for Social Reform, that's OPEC, is organising an event in the north of Cyprus along with the Cyprus Turkish Medical Association. Joining us to tell us all about it is OPEC's Secretary General, Theano Kalavana. Theano, first let's find out a bit more about OPEC. Mm -hmm. It's an organisation that I know has been going for some time and they have a lot of events throughout the year. Mm -hmm. What is it? What are its aims? Our aims is uh, basically um, to uh, try to promote um, what is for the best interest of our island based on EU and uh, of course um, our biggest aim is uh, solving the Cyprus problem in order to, to develop further our society and see Cyprus. This is our aim is uh, mainly focusing on the development of Cyprus within the EU and, and try to take Cyprus where it should be all these years through our uh, collaborations with the EU plus uh, solving the Cyprus problem. 
Right, now then, you're a doctor, so I'm assuming that since this next event on Monday is with the Cyprus Turkish Medical Association, you probably had something to do with that collaboration. But it's not medicine that you're going to be discussing, it's oil. Yes, it's oil. Uh, basically, what uh, our aim is this year is to develop further our collaborations uh, with our um, Turkish Cypriot counterparts. And um, Turkish Cypriot uh, Medical Association is one of our counterparts that we already had another event in the north with them. And it seems that it's a collaboration that will also uh, further develop, plus uh, collaborations with other kind of associations in, in the north for the same reason. We aim a lot for, to buy communal events this year as um, the past 20 years we have been doing many many events um, in the south only but now we want to uh, develop further these collaborations and have more events also in the Turkey Cypriot community so we can hear the voices of everyone on the island about all these issues that worries everyone and concerns us. Right, now the topic is going to be the natural gas issue, what should we do? Who are you expecting to come to this event? Okay, apart from uh, people from the societies, uh, we are expecting few diplomats. We have uh, confirmed some of the embassies, uh, some of the ambassadors are attending, also UN is attending this event. Um, but they know about this already because it's their job. It's the Turkish Cypriot and Greek Cypriot citizens of Cyprus who need to perhaps hear what has to be said and maybe make their own suggestions. Yes, this is what we are expecting, actually. This is what we aim, uh, is to hear the citizens' voices as to this topic. We have two specialists as keynote speakers, uh, Ozdil Nami, who was a former negotiator of the Turkish Cypriot uh, community, who knows very well the gas issue based on the solution of the Cyprus problem as a mean, let's say, to solve the Cyprus problem. And also Charles uh, Elinas, who is an oil and natural gas expert, who knows very well, is a more a technocrat, so he knows very well the aspect, the issue of oil in, in that perspective. But he's uh, also a person who knows the games in the area, so he can give us an input into that too. And in terms of the geopolitics yes. and the Turkish drilling at the moment yes, and so on. Yes, exactly, exactly. Exactly this. And uh, what we want to discuss is uh, what uh, we should do about this issue because as we have seen um, the past uh, few months, it seems that uh, since uh, the Greek Cypriots are moving on without including in any way the Turkish Cypriots into this uh, issue. We have all these consequences around Cyprus with the drilling of uh, Turkey in our seas. So what we want to see and discuss is what we should do about it. So this is happening on Monday. Now, will there be follow-ups? Because, as we said at the beginning, you've done a lot of events at both south but now also north. If this goes off well... Mm -hmm. How do you follow it up to keep those citizens engaged in the different aspects of other issues mm -hmm. that have a bearing on whether or not we live together or we partition? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a great plan for this year, actually, not only uh, with um, having more events in, in both communities, uh, not only on oil, gas, but also climate change, environmental um, issues and how these are related to not solving the Cyprus problem and so on. Not only the events, we have so many announcements coming up, uh, also collaborations with radio stations in the Turkish Cypriot community. So we, we are trying to be as active as possible in both communities and involve the citizens because there's no other way to uh, promote the best interest of the country if we are not all of us on board. Who that. funds OPEC? 
<laughs> OPEC is funded by their members. Um, uh, we have an annual, let's say, fee for the members of OPEC. Sometimes uh, we ask for from some people to, let's say, the, cover the expenses of an event, like the live streaming and so on. But, but mostly it's a, it's a volunteer work from uh, many of us that we put so many hours for things to happen. So it's not funded by, I don't know, the EU or the UN or anything like that, but they support no. you? No, we never got in, uh, funding from EU or UN, but uh, we do plan uh, to apply for some fundings that are out there for citizens and by communal activities in order to keep uh, more alive and we have some money to do better events in the future as to bringing together citizens from the two communities. So at the moment, no no fundings. <laughs> it's more uh, members of OPEC and, and some people that uh, they're willing sometimes to cover an expense for us, uh, let's say. How many uh, members have you got? Uh, in the past, we had so many. Now we are trying, we, we had more than 200, but now we are trying to see, uh, we're going to send again applications to see who would like to continue being a member. And then in, in case that they would like to, then they need to pay the fees, which is not an important amount, to be honest, to, to be a member of OPEC. So if somebody is listening to this and thinks, I want to find out more, what do they do? Uh, we have a web page. Uh, actually, our web page at the moment is under construction. So the updated one will come, supposedly was going to come first of the September, uh, but because of some issues, we're going to have our new web page uh, first of October. And from there, they can they can also fill the form of becoming a member to our website. And what about things like Facebook, social media? Yeah, we you... have we have uh, we have a Facebook page, so they can uh, join uh, in the group and, and and learn about us, learn about our events. Uh, we also have many members of the board that we are all writing articles in newspapers. We are very active, uh, five of us. We are publishing articles every Sunday in different newspapers so they can read some of our articles, they can read about our events, they can discuss with us topics that they would like to share, their opinion and so on. And we have a Facebook page, we have Twitter and we don't have Instagram. So that is Theano Calavana, the General Secretary of OPEC, which is the Association for Social Reform. Along with the Cyprus Turkish Medical Association, they're inviting you to an open discussion on Monday. It's going to take place at 7 p.m. in the north of Cyprus. The details doubtless on the Facebook page and the topic, the natural gas issue. What? should we do you can subscribe to the cypress news digest on itunes for free and get the program downloaded to your phone or tablet so you can listen anytime anywhere well on last week's program it was culture all the way with the kipria festival and of course the cypress symphony orchestra we're staying with culture for part of this week's program because italian film days are back now sadly we've missed the beginning of the festival but there is still a chance to catch the last few days joining us on the program it's a pleasure to welcome back to the cypress news digest italy's ambassador to nicosia andrea cavallari andrea tell me first of all what we've missed because I'm sure people will be a bit sad that we didn't get this to them in time for the beginning of the festival what's been happening earlier this week no you shouldn't be so sad there's still more to come and I'm sure that the public here in Cyprus will appreciate this second edition of the uh, Italian film days this year edition is a much more improved uh, uh, since, since we have uh, more collaboration. Uh, in particular, we have uh, a great collaboration, great support from the Ministry of Culture, Education and Culture, the Cultural Services. In a sense, they are going to support us uh, uh, with the translation of the subtitles in Greek. And this is fundamental uh, because uh, uh, our movies are in uh, original language, Italian, and this is a part of uh, our, our job to promote the Italian language. But having subtitles in Greek and in English will allow a greater public uh, to participate in. So don't be so sad. You have, done, you have not missed uh, so much. There is still much to, to see, uh, in particular 
here in Nicosia on Friday the 13th with two screenings at 7 and 9 p.m. And then for the, the, the weekend in Limassol, you still have the possibility to see three different movies. All right, let's talk about the ones, first of all, that are happening tonight in Nicosia. The movies that are shown on the 13th uh, are La Pelle dell'Orso and La Pazza Gioia, the first at 7 o'clock and the second at 9 o'clock in the, in the Pantheon Theatre. And I'm glad to just to say, if allow me, that this year we have expanded uh, to three cities. The festival uh, has interested uh, uh, Larnaca, where we had the opening, uh, the official opening, on the 9th, uh, then move to Nicosia, and we will finish with Limassol. So thank you so much also to the municipalities and to the Deputy Minister of Tourism for supporting us. They put the, the festival under their auspices. Thank you also to the theatre for their great support. Pelle dell'Orso is an is a interesting movie capturing the, relation, uh, the difficult relation between the father and the son. Is happening in the in the in the, in the mountains, uh, and uh, it develops around uh, the uh, difficult relation inside the family. La Pazza Gioia is a completely different movie. That's a comedy, isn't it? Yes, uh, it's a comedy uh, with fantastic actors. Valeria Bruni Tedeschi is part of it. The story is about the relationship again between uh, two uh, young ladies uh, uh, undergoing uh, medical treatment uh, in a house uh, in the north of Italy. It's, it's glamorous, it's adventurous. Uh, I'm sure that the public will enjoy it. OK, let's move on to tomorrow evening, Saturday, in Limassol at the Rialto Theatre. Once again, La Pelle dell'Orso. And then you've also got Perfetti Sconosciuti. Yes, Perfetti Sconosciuti is, is a, a movie which is, uh, I think, uh, the story is already known here in Cyprus because there was also last year, if I'm not wrong, it was adapted to the theatre and uh, the, the, the theatre was called Luna Rossa. Uh, Perfetti Sconosciuti tells about uh, the secret life that everybody of us, of us uh, has and uh, the difficulty to cope uh, uh, with the modern technology to keep this life uh, as secret as we would like. So, uh, again, great cast. Uh, Giallino, for example, is part of it, uh, but many others, uh, Valerio Maestrandrea, Alba Rockwarker, uh, Giuseppe Battiston, just to mention some of them, and the director is Paolo Genovese. Great movie, I really recommend everybody to go and see it. And the whole thing ends on Sunday, again at the Rialto Theatre. Now, that's the closing night, and I think that you've got a director and one of the actors of the film that you're going to be showing actually joining you in Cyprus? Yes, indeed. And this is, again, uh, one of the improvements of this here festival. For the closing night, uh, we will have the privilege to have with us uh, Fabio Gravina, who is the director of uh, the movie Un Figlio a Tutti Costi, A Child at All Costs, as well as the producer, uh, Salvatore Scarico. Uh, movie uh, do, uh, not only do represent uh, a, a society, the dynamic uh, into the society, Italian society, modern society, but also represent uh, a, a fantastic industry. And uh, uh, Cyprus uh, uh, has uh, developed uh, very much uh, this intention to attract uh, directors uh, and producers here in Cyprus. We would like to pass the same message. Uh, how important is what is behind the camera? Uh, the number of jobs that uh, are needed to create uh, a movie. If you look at, for example, the number of Oscar uh, that has been uh, accredited to Italy, the great majority of them uh, didn't go to the directors, uh, and with all the respect we pay to them, but uh, to photographers, uh, to uh, light engineers, uh, to music uh, directors, and so on. So it's also this message. M movie, it's uh, a reflective society, but it's also an industry. It's very interesting uh, as uh, a possible uh, area of cooperation between countries. And finally, you've got an announcement at the end of the festival of the most liked movie of the festival. How are you going to collect that information? This is something that we did already last year for the first ed edition of the festival, and I think that the public like it very much. So we are going to ask uh, to those who are participated, and we have already asked to those who have participated at the first screening, and we will continue throughout the festival, to vote at the end of the screening and to tell us uh, if they had liked it or not, uh, the movie they have seen. 
at the end uh, we will uh, put all those uh, expression of uh, favor together and we will see which one is the best movie according to the taste of the public. On the final night, uh, we'll also go into uh, award a special uh, prize uh, to Franco Gravina and Salvatore Scarico for the, the role and, and, and energy they've put in the uh, movie uh, activity the movie, as, uh, as uh, key figures of the Italian uh, movie panorama. So, it's still the going. Continuing tonight in Nicosia, tomorrow and on Sunday at the Rialto Theatre in Limassol, that is Italian Film Days 2019. And our thanks to His Excellency Andrea Cavallari, the Ambassador of Italy to Nicosia, for joining us this week. Well, that about wraps up this edition of the Cyprus News Digest. Many thanks for your company. Hope you'll join me next week. Till we meet again, take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.